very interesting experience today. Um, I went to my first non-Catholic communion service, and obviously I did not partake. Catholics and Protestants have closed communion, which means that we don't take each other's communion since we have such fundamentally different ideas about what's going on there. I had never been to anything besides the Catholic communion before. I'd been to other churches, but they never had their Lord's Supper, as they call it. And so it was really interesting to see that done. Here was my first time seeing Protestants and how they interpret that and how they reenact the, not, not reenact, but how they fulfill uh, Jesus is do this in memory of me, um, how they do it in a different way, and understanding it in a different way, and I, I suppose because the Eucharist is, is such a sacred thing and such a fundamental thing to our religion and how we worship, um, I guess I was just nervous to see that done in a way that wasn't Catholic, which wasn't keeping in mind true presence. Just really, you know, the main theological difference between, I think you can safely say, pretty much all Catholics and Protestants. It was actually really beautiful because uh, they were so reverent. I, I don't know what I was expecting, but they were so reverent. And the pastor got up in front of everybody and said, you know, if you don't, if you aren't a confessed Christian, if you don't believe this, then please we ask you to refrain because they did consider it a sacrament. Now they don't, they don't consider it a sacrament as in the the physical thing itself conducts the graces, I don't think. Uh, but definitely, definitely, um, they considered it as a means for you to grow spiritually, to invite Jesus into you uh, a lot spiritually, and for an opportunity for you to grow and grow closer. And, um, and so he asked, you know, if you're not a confessed Christian, if you've been forbidden from the table before, the table, they call it that, and just reminding people the gravity of what they're going to do. And I guess that struck me because as Catholics, you know, we believe that the Eucharist is so much more than that. Our communion is direct communion with God, sacramentally, but body, blood, soul, and divinity with God. And if you watch people going up to receive communion in a Catholic church, I will say it, most of the time, you know they're not thinking that. And if they are thinking that, then wow, they don't really respect God very much. You know, they're stumping up there and body of Christ, amen. Oh, nom, 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 nom. Like, no reverence. No reverence. And then here was this Protestant pastor conducting a Lord's Supper and reminding everybody that <laughs> this lighting is really weird. Hold on. That's better! But reminding everybody the gravity of what they were about to do, the reverence they needed for this sacrament that Jesus had, had put in place, even though they didn't believe it in the sense that we do. It was very obvious that there was definitely a communion of some sort with God within that. You know, not sacramentally body, blood, soul, and divinity as we have in the Eucharist, but there was definitely something going on there. And I just, I didn't expect that. I thought it was just sort of a symbol of communion or whatever, and I'm sure it's different in different places, but it was really nice. The more I get to know Protestants and go to their churches and stuff, the more I see how much they have to teach us. I, it's true. We have a lot to teach them because our tradition is so rich and so full of, of wisdom because we've been doing it for 2,000 years. But they also have a lot, a lot to teach us about excitement and exuberance about the faith, about just being out there. But a lot of the times we as Catholics get into the routine. We have our mass, we sing the hymns and the psalms, but we can do it without thinking. And in their services, it really seems to me, for the ones I've seen, it seems to me there's a lot more thinking, a lot more feeling and praying and thinking about things that I think we could definitely work on. As a side note, I think Vatican II was actually pointing toward this and is, well, very slowly being incorporated the proper way in churches that it was misconstrued for a long time. I don't know how to end this video, but yes, it was a very interesting experience and I just thought I'd talk about it because I don't know what else to talk about today. So yeah, bye.